Today, I'm going to show you how to get six pack abs in Photoshop. Hey there and welcome to Flearn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flearn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. In today's episode, we're going to have a lot of fun with this. We're going to create six pack abs in Photoshop. It's a simple trick basically using highlight and shadow you can use to carve out features on your body. Now, you can use the same ideas to create other bumps and make your muscles larger and things like that. In today's episode, we're going to show you how to get six pack abs. We start today's episode by creating some custom shapes that look like abs. Then we go into our layer effects and add a bevel and emboss, adding highlight and shadow. Now we match the skin color from our actual subject so it makes it look like she's actually got skin that bumps in and out just like abs. Guys, we got a great episode. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. Okay, so here's our image for today. Now we do have a subject that actually would be feasible that she's got the abs and she does actually have some definition going on here. We're going to just enhance that a little bit. So if you're, you know, nowhere near having abs, this probably won't look super realistic. And what we're going for is a little bit of realism here. All right, this is going to be a lot of fun. So to start off, what we're going to do, we've got our background layer. We're going to go right over here to our shape tool and I'm going to click on my rounded rectangle tool. So rounded rectangle tool. Okay. And now my job, let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit here. We're going to create basically six rectangles here. So we're going to start over here and I'm going to click and drag in this direction to create our first ab. There we go. Just like that. Now, in this case, we have options for the fill and the stroke. The stroke is the line that goes right around the actual shape. Okay. So in this case, we're going to click right here and I'm going to click on the slash icon because we don't need a stroke. We're just going to fill with one color. Now we're using the rounded rectangle tool. So here in our properties window, if you don't see your properties window, simply go to window and down to properties. There we go. What we're going to do is we can actually control the radius of each of the corners here on our custom shape. So we can click right here, basically on our little radius icon and simply drag to the right to control the radius of our app. So Obviously we don't want it, you know, that, <laughs> that doesn't look incredibly realistic. So let's go ahead and bring that out to right about there. Now, if you want to, you can actually change the radius on each of these individually. For instance, if you wanted to do that, you could totally do that as well. I'm going to just hit undo for this case. We're just going to leave them all right about the same. Okay. And I think that looks good. Maybe we'll just bring this up just a little bit larger there. All right, right about 90. So this is going to be one of our shapes here. Now I've got my rounded rectangle. What we're going to do is duplicate this. So click and drag it to the new layer icon. There we go. So we've got a copy here and I'm going to grab my move tool and hold the shift key and then move that from the right to the left, just like that. Okay. So basically we've created our first couple of shapes. Now what we're going to do is group them together and duplicate. So we've got our shapes right here in the middle. We're going to add some on the top and on the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and start by grouping these. I'm going to hit shift and click the two of those. Hit control or command G to group them together. Here we can see have, we have our group one. So let's go ahead and duplicate our group one. We're going to click and drag this down to the new layer icon. Okay, and we're going to use our move tool and hold shift and click right up. There we go. Looks good. And let's go ahead and create a group on the bottom as well. So control or command J is going to duplicate that. All right, and we're going to click and drag that down right about there. Okay. Now in this case, we actually want to stretch out these bottom abs just a little bit. So here's our group here. We're going to hit control or command T for our transform dialog. And I'm just going to simply click here on the bottom and drag this out. Okay. And then we also want to bring them together a little bit. So clicking here, let's just zoom in so you guys can see this clicking here on the edge. We're going to click here, hold down control shift and alt. And we can actually, this is called the perspective. So we can actually bring these together. There we go and make them look a little bit more like they're part of the body. All right, let's hit enter there. And now we're going to do the same thing for our top group as well. So control T for the transform command. Okay. Now I'm holding control shift and alt. If you guys are on a PC, it's going to be, uh, sorry, PC is going to be control alt and shift. And on a Mac, it's going to be shift option and command. Okay. So all three of your keyboard shortcuts there, and we're just going to pull these in slightly. All right. Cool. Now let's use our move tool and simply move this down. So we've got equal spacing between the top and the bottom. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. I think these lower ramps might be a little bit too tall, so let's just go ahead and bring those up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, and now we basically have three different groups. So what I'm gonna do, let's shift click all of those groups together and hit controller command G to group them all together into one group now. Okay, and now because they're all one group, I can simply duplicate this entire group, okay? And I can hit controller command E as an echo to merge them together. So now on one layer, you can see it's merged a group to a layer. So I still have my group here. I still have all this as backups. If I wanted to go and change these sizes and scale them and things like that, I've got these as a backup, but here on one layer, now we have this custom shape. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and transform the custom shape to actually make it look like it's part of the body, and then we're gonna jump into layer effects. All right, so now to transform our entire shape. Let's hit Control or Command T for our transform, and I'm gonna click here on the top, holding Control or Command, and I can move these around, right? So we wanna move them around the center line of our subject. There we go, and let's bring that here. Make sure it's around the center line of your subject. All right, there we go, and you can scale this up. And feel free to make this either larger or smaller as well. I think it needs to be a little bit larger. Okay, so basically you've got your custom shape there, and then, there we go, and then you can go ahead and put it where it needs to go on the body. So let's go ahead and hit enter there. Now, I am going to apply a blur as well to this, okay, because we don't need, I mean, no one has that hard edges on their app. So let's go ahead and apply a blur. Now, before I apply the blur, I'm just gonna make a duplicate, just in case I don't like the blur that I apply. I will always have this to go back to. So let's go ahead and hit Controller Command J that duplicates our layer, okay? And next, we're gonna go to Filter, down to Blur, and over to Gaussian Blur. All right, now our Gaussian Blur, you just wanna choose something that looks kind of realistic you know, along with your image. Something, you know, right about there starts to look pretty good. Yeah, you know, even something like that. I think that looks really nice. It, it just looks a lot more natural. Okay, so our Gaussian blur, good to go. Okay, so now that we have our Gaussian blur in place, it's time to go ahead and layer some layer effects. And this is where we're gonna add the highlight and the shadow to the abs. So to load layer effects on this layer, you can simply go to the FX dialog and go to blending options. So here we have our layer style. You can also double click right here, right next to your layer. Okay, layer style. Now here we are gonna be working with Bevel and Boss. So before we get started, we wanna kinda of look at our image and get an idea. We've got highlights, let's look at our arm. We've got a highlight here on this side of the arm and a shadow here on this side. This means the light source is coming from this direction. So we wanna do about the same thing here on the apps. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on our Bevel and Boss. There we go. And we can see, let's, let's just bring our depth up here. I'm gonna kinda exaggerate it a little bit, all right? And now we can choose the angle for our shading. So if I click over here, you can see we've got highlight here and shadow over here. We wanna match the light direction from the actual image, right? So we're gonna choose something right around here, and you can change this at any point in time. Okay, so our lighting direction matches relatively well. Now in this case, we can actually still see the white from the original layer. So what I'm gonna do is go to my blending options. Let's click here on blending options. And we have two sliders here. We have an opacity slider and a fill opacity slider. Now here's the difference between the two. Opacity is gonna control the visibility of the layer as well as the layer effects. You can see the layers disappearing, but also this bevel and emboss, that's disappearing too. Okay, let's bring that up to 100. Now fill opacity just changes the visibility of the layer, but the layer effect stays visible. So let's bring this down and you can see the layer itself, check that out, it's pretty cool already, huh? The layer itself is becoming invisible, right? And now we just have the opacity of the actual layer effects. So again, use fill opacity to bring down the fill opacity of just the layer. Okay, now you can already see this looks like an a, a action figure or something like that. So all we need to do here is fine tune our settings to create something a little bit more believable. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back to our bevel and emboss. Let's go ahead and click here. Now, there are a couple of fun things we can do. We have options here for our colors. So we have highlight mode is screen. Okay, that's lightening. Our shadow mode is multiply. Okay, and we have white and black. So instead of just using white and black, we're gonna use the colors from our subject's skin. So I'm gonna click here on white, okay? And 
basically I can choose any color we want. We could have, you know, red abs if we want. But we're going to hover over our image and go right to a highlight color and click there on the highlight color of our subject. Let's hit OK there. OK. And I'm going to change our layer blend mode from screen to normal. OK. And there you can see this is actually the color of our subject's skin. Let's do the same thing with our shadow. We're going to click here on the black. And instead of black, we're going to use a shadow color from our subject. So let's go right over here to some like nice dark shadow color. There we go. And you can have this be on set to multiply or set to normal. Now with the shadow color, let's go ahead and bring that up just a little bit. Shadow color, let's go ahead and keep that on multiply here and we can change our opacity just like that. All right, so you can see it's blending in quite a bit better now. Okay, then we have some options for our depth. So you can kind of lower your depth a little bit, make these a little bit, you know, not, not stand out as much. And you can increase your depth as well. Obviously, I wanted to create something that looks relatively realistic. I'm, I'm not interested in creating something super fake here. So, although we are totally faking something, I, I, <laughs> I do realize that. Okay, so now it comes time to make this actually look real. And that's going to be controlled between your depth, your size, and your softening. You also have a few options for your actual style. So you can choose an outer bevel if you want. Okay, there we go. And you can change the size here as well as your softening. All right, so it's going to depend on the actual image that you choose, what type of, you know, effect actually looks good. So bringing my softening up in this case, I think looks pretty decent. And that's an outer bevel. So next, let's go to an inner bevel. All right, we can bring our size up for our inner, inner bevel. We can bring our softening up and down and we can change our depth here as well. So again, we'd want to do something like that, like relatively, um, relatively subtle. Okay, and here we have our emboss. So we're gonna wind up using emboss here. Okay, so with emboss, again, we can choose our depth. All right, let's go ahead and choose something like that to start off with. I'll show you guys how your size works. So size is the actual size of the highlights and the shadows here. So we're gonna choose something right about there. And then softening, you can see this just, let's bring our size and our depth up so you can see softening a little bit better. It just kind of softens the hard edge. So we do wanna bring softening up right there to about the middle. Okay, and here's our depth and we have our actual size here as well. There we go. And we can kind of just work with these different, there we go, we can work with our different, all right, sliders here. <laughs> just trying to make sure we get something that looks good. I think if I bring the size up a little bit, there we go, and we bring our depth down, obviously if we bring our depth up, it's not looking too good. So let's go ahead and bring our depth down so we get something like that. And that does start to actually look pretty realistic. All right, so now we can work on our angle. You can see again, if I change it to that angle, obviously it doesn't look good anymore, right? So we have two controls here for our angle. So we can bring our angle up. You can use the up and down arrows to change your angle. I like to hold shift and hit up and down and that controls it by 10 degrees, okay? So we would just wanna bring this, I'm gonna hit shift and the up arrow Okay, till we start to match our actual image. There we go, something like that looks pretty good. And then here we have our altitude. So let's go ahead and bring that down and start bringing this up. And this is basically how high our light source is. So let's hit the down arrow a few times until this starts to look a little bit more realistic there. All right, and we're bringing our altitude down, 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 down. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now. I think the highlight does look pretty good here. Okay, let's go ahead and bring that right to about there. Okay, and you know what? I'm gonna change their blending mode from normal down. Let's go ahead and change this down from normal to screen as well. So it does just lighten up. Okay, and our shadow we can bring up or down as well. So we can make this more visible or less visible. And obviously whether, you know, whether or not this blends into your image well, it's gonna to totally depend on your image. Okay, so every, every image is going to be a little bit different. All right. Well, I think that looks pretty good for now. Let's hit OK. All right. Let's go ahead and turn this off and on. All right. So we're looking pretty good. Now we've got a couple more finishing steps. We can go ahead and use a layer mask to hide some visibility in here to kind of get it blending in. And we can still transform this layer to really make it blend into our subject. All right. Let's jump back in and show you how that works. All right, guys, so jumping back into Photoshop, the first thing I want to do is transform this just a little bit more. We want it to be a little bit smaller here on the top and then grow larger on the bottom. So let's hit Control or Command T for the transform. 
Okay, I'm going to hold Control, Alt, and Shift, and we're going to click here on this corner and drag that in. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing right down there. We're just going to drag that out a little bit. Okay, so we've got a little bit more. Let's hit Enter there, and there's here's the before and the after. It just kind of makes it look a little bit more like it's part of the body. So again, smaller here at the top, and then larger there at the bottom. Okay, and then with this effect, so cool. <laughs> with this effect, you know what? I just think it needs to be rotated just a little bit as well. So let's rotate it, th rotate it around. Let's click here on our layer mask icon. Here's our layer mask, and I'm going to use my brush tool, and we're going to paint black with a soft edge brush. And by painting black here, it just makes this layer invisible wherever I paint black. Okay, so if you just want to soften up some areas, like for instance, if that highlight's a little bit too strong, or you know you want to soften this area up, you can do that simply by painting black. And if you want an area to reappear, simply paint white. You can see painting white here makes that invis back visible again. And painting black makes this invisible again. Okay, so like where the light would actually fall off, this is where you want to go ahead and paint black in those areas there. All right, pretty cool stuff. So let's go ahead and make this visible and invisible. And there you can see it, guys. <laughs> That's a pretty cool effect. Let's make sure it's invisible here over the shorts. We don't need to give... Um, <laughs> my shorts got abs. <laughs> we don't need to have abs visible on shorts. That doesn't make any sense. All right, so painting it black right over top of there. All right, there we have it, guys. Let's make this layer visible and invisible. And that's how we do it, how to get six-pack abs in Photoshop. If you want to do this yourself, just follow these key steps. First, go ahead and use the rounded rectangle tool to create a shape that actually looks like an ab. You can adjust your radius to make it look more realistic. Then I duplicated this a couple of times and transformed both the top and the bottom using the perspective warp. Hold down Shift, Control, and Option. Once we had our shapes together, I merged all of our different groups together so we had one layer. Then use the Gaussian Blur to go ahead and blur it to make a little bit more of a realistic shape. Next it's time to add layer effects. Simply click on your layer, go to the FX icon, and go down to Blending Options. Now, we have options for layer opacity and fill opacity. Go ahead and bring the fill opacity all the way down to zero so we don't see the actual shape. Now it's time to add a bevel and emboss. In this case, we're using the emboss style on the bevel emboss to add a highlight over top of the right side and a shadow on the left side. Every single image is going to be different, so use depth, size, and softening to make abs that actually look real. Then when it comes to your highlight and shadow color, go ahead and click on those colors and sample colors from your actual subject's skin. So you're painting with the highlight and the shadow color of your subject's skin. And then to finish the effect off, use the transform tool to get it to fit perfectly into the body and use a layer mask to make it visible and invisible in places to get it to blend in. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's episode. I hope you had fun learning how to create this abs effect in Photoshop. If you love Photoshop as much as I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question or comment about today's episode, just leave it right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. Hi. Bye. Bye, everyone. Did I say hi? Cool. Recording an episode. Oh, you thought I was done? <laughs>